Hello and welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to make a 2D water simulation. Now, you might be asking, how are you going to do so? So this is actually, I, I wrote this code. Not, I didn't invent this algorithm, but I wrote this code. It's got to be at least 10 years ago. This is one of the first things. This essay on how to create this algorithm for creating 2D water ripples has been on the internet for a really long time. In fact, it's not on the internet anymore. This was the URL, and this URL uh, Hugo.Elias, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. But thankfully, the Internet Archive, and I don't know who this person is who wrote this essay. Thank you, hello, if you're out there. <laughs> Get in touch, write in the comments. But um, this is a really fun algorithm, and it works. It's very, if, you, if you're if you looking for some background for it, you want to know a little bit about how pixels work, two-dimensional arrays maybe, cellular automata, this idea of a grid of cells with states. I've had a bunch of videos that I've made related to how this algorithm works that I will link to in this video's description. Excuse me. But what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is just read this web page and write the code that follows along exactly with what it's doing and see if we can get the result that is, on, that is described here to create 2D water ripples. So let's just get started. I apologize for how I'm going to have to read this out loud. Okay, blah, 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 narrative, 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 narrative. So firstly, you'll need two arrays of words, well, integers. Okay, um, so let's do that. So let me go open up processing. Processing, I always feel I have to say this, is a programming environment built on top of Java. More information at processing.org. Download this if you want to follow along. And I will create a JavaScript version of this that runs in the browser as well when I publish the code. All right. So let's set void setup, void draw. These are the sort of basic functions to control the flow of the program and processing. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to make two. Uh, Two-dimensional, I'm just going to say like 100 by 100, just arbitrarily right now. Let's actually do a 200 by 200. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, water one, water two, because I don't know what those are going to be used for yet. I haven't looked at this in like 10 years. Uh, I'm going to say size 200, 200. Okay. So I have a window that is 200 by 200 pixels, and I have this these two-dimensional arrays. And I bet you could write like a super fast, crazy version of this with shaders or something. So Maybe you're watching this, you're gonna to wanna to do that later, but let's try to do this basically, just follow along. Okay, back to here. Um, that's right, these arrays will hold the state of the water. One holds the current state, the other holds the state from the previous frame. So let's actually call this current and uh, previous. Oh, why can't those have the same number of letters in them? No, preview, preview. So this is gonna be current and preview. Whatever, no, that bothers me more, previous, okay. Um, it's important that you have two arrays since you need to know how the water has changed since the last frame. Buffer two, buffer one, buffer two. I could call them buffer one, buffer two. Anyway, data from the previous frame, blah, 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 blah. Damping, some integer between zero and one. So we need some, some so we need to have a damping. Uh, let's, let's try 0 0.9. So the beginning loop, what I need to do, well, first I need to, I need, I need to fill those arrays with some values. The truth of the matter is I think they're going to get filled by default with, um, um, with zeros, and I also want to, I think I want to keep track of the columns and rows in a variable. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. <laughs> I lost my ability to type. No, that's right. Ah! All right, there we go. Um, uh, for every not, so let's, this is begin loop. So this is the, boy, this background is making it hard for you to see the algorithm. But for every non-edge element, so let's do that. For every non-edge element, what does that mean? For int x, x equals 1. Oh, let's actually use i and j. i equals 1. i is less than uh, columns minus 1, i plus plus. That is a way of looping through every non-edge element. And I'm going to do the same thing with j. j is less than rows minus 1 and a j plus plus. All right. Uh, oh. And now what do I do? Let's just copy paste this and say, all right, so what this really means here is this is saying current, the current x, y, which is really current i, j, 
is equal to the sum. I mean, you can see these are a bunch of neighbors. x minus 1, x plus 1, y plus 1, y minus 1. What this is really doing, if I come over here to the whiteboard, you'll have to excuse this. I'm doing some tutorials about TensorFlow.js. I didn't want to erase that. So that's still here in this coding challenge. Um, uh, basically, if this is my current ij, I want the new value that goes in this ij to be a function of its value as well as its neighbors to the right, to the top, to the left, and the bottom. So that's what's happening here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say uh, equals previous uh, x minus 1 y plus previous, oh and it's not x, I'm using i and j, which now I regret making that decision. All right, i, uh, j, uh, it's all plus, right? And I'm, let me go back here. Wait, these are being, are these being multiplied by each other? This is weird. Where are the pluses? I sort of assumed this was all being added together, right? It doesn't actually say. Let me see. Um, does it describe this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is addition. Um, well, let's, let's try it. It would make sense to add everything together. So i minus 1j, oh boy, i plus 1j, then uh, plus i j minus 1 plus i j plus 1. Ugh. Ugh. Come on, indent this the way that I like. <laughs> Plus, and then, so that this whole thing divided by 2 minus previous ij. So I think I got that right. So basically, um, and let's actually, let's just do this. So this should be all of it. I mean, I don't love the way this is auto formatted, but we'll live with it. I can actually put this on the next line might make me happier. So this is all of these added together. Previous I minus I minus one, I plus one, J minus one, J plus one, all added together divided by two minus what the current value is. So this is kind of like an image processing algorithm. You're saying like add up all the things around me and then subtract my value. Okay, now display buffer two and swap the buffers. Wow, this is a really, yeah, this, this coding challenge is gonna be over soon. So what do I, what, what, what's one way I could display it? Hmm. Well, let's first set a background. And then while I'm doing this, I could say load pixels. And I could say update pixels, right? Because what I could do is I could use the value of current ij to be the pixel color, yes. So I'm going to say uh, pixels. So let me first get an index value. Index equals i plus j times columns. This is an algorithm that I've talked about many, many times. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This has to be inside of the loop. Um, this particular algorithm I've talked about many times. And what this algorithm is doing is it's saying like the pixels are actually stored in a one dimensional array, but I'm looping through this two dimensional array. So find the right location in the one dimensional array and then give me a color equal to the current i, j value. Okay. Um, and um, update pixels. So let's just run this and see if anything happens. It's all black. That's good because it's all zeros. Right? What if I were to just initialize, let me just go through, um, I didn't actually do the swapping part, but just, just for the sake of argument, let me go through and actually write something to initialize that whole array, two dimensional array, and just say current uh, i equals 100, previous, uh, it should be i j, j equals, this is a little bit silly what I'm doing, but I just want to see that this is working. Run this again, we should see a gray value. Whoops, run this again. Right, we see a gray value. If I do 255 for both of those, 
I'm going to see white. Okay, so it actually is rendering what's in there. And then I forgot something really important, which is written in the algorithm, swap the buffers, because what is now current should be previous for the next frame. And then we have a new current, which should then become previous for the next frame. And so there's a nice swapping algorithm that I can use to do that. I can create a two-dimensional reference to, called, that I'm going to call temporary, which should equal uh, current. Then I'm going to say previous equals, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to say which e equals Actually, yeah, 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 previous. <laughs> so I'm going to say previous is now the current, right? The current is now previous, and then I can just reuse that other, the previous one for current instead of making a new two-dimensional array. This is a swapping algorithm. I have to store a reference to previous because I'm going to overwrite what previous is pointing to, but then I'm going to set current equal that. So this should now still work, but I'm not going to see anything. So now. Hopefully we're going to see something. Now here's the thing. I kind of I kind of want these to be floats. I don't know why they're integers. I sort of feel like they should be floats because I'm going to do all this like math to them. Um, and um, so this should also be a float. And now what if what I'm going to do is I'm going to whenever I click the mouse so let's just see if this works to be, let's say uh, previous, previous like 100, 100 equals 255. Um, and um, let's see if this is going to do what I think it's going to do. I'm just thinking, thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a crazy person while I'm live streaming. Does this make sense what I'm doing? Oh, whatever. Let's just run it. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, something happened. It like spread, it spread out from the center there. Hmm, what did I get wrong? Oh, I, did I, I forgot about the dampening. I forgot about the dampening. Very important there. So where do I do that? Uh, so now I also need to say current ij. I need to dampen it equals current ij times damping. Did I call it damping or dampening? I guess I should call it dampening, right? Dampening. I'm back. That was uh, uh, edited out like a me just like spinning my head around for a while there because I really was not being very careful. It, this says buffer two here. This says buffer one here. And in my code, I have previous. I'm adding up all the previous, dividing that by two, and then subtracting out previous. But that's not what I want, right? Because we have current and we have previous. And so um, it's different data. <laughs> so I'm taking the neighbors from previous and then subtracting out what's in current. So let me fix that. Let me fix that, change that here. Uh, um, the dampening is there. I added that in while I was debugging. Maybe you just saw me do that, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, and now, aha, there we go. That looked like a water ripple. All right, let's, let's be a little bit more explicit. So first of all, let's, um, let's just make the dampening uh, zero, like really high, I'm just curious. Yeah, you can see that ripple kind of going out, whoa, and bouncing around the edges, cool. All right, I'm gonna leave it at 0.9. Now, this is really what I wanna do. Let me make this like 600 by 400. Let me add mouse pressed. And by the way, the, um, let me put, let me, I'm gonna take, the columns should equal the width. I'm going to put all this. The rows should equal the height. And I want to initialize. I got to do this all after I set the size. Um, and now these, I can set the, the two arrays. So I want to do all that in setup so that whenever I change the size of the window to, the number of columns, rows, and the, and the two-dimensional arrays all change. So let's run this and see, just see. Whoops, what happened to my, oh, I, I commented that out, that out. So now what I want to do is when I click the mouse, I want to find the right spot in the array, 
and I want to say index equals mouse x plus mouse y times rows, and me clicking the mouse is like dropping a pebble into the water, and so I can say, I think I, I put it in previous. I don't know, it, doesn't, it might not matter. Previous index, oh no, 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 I forgot. These are two-dimensional arrays already. So I can actually just say previous mouse x, mouse y equals 255. So as I click, and I'm just curious, I think it'll actually work the same way if I put current. Yeah. So let's, let's use current, it kind of makes a little more sense to me. Let's, de let's increase the dampening a bit. I mean, it's actually decreasing it so that the ripples go out a little further. I want to see them interact with each other. That's pretty cool. And I'm, so there we go. Water ripples in processing pixel-based water ripples. And now it would be so, what, oh, oh, what am I even doing? What am I even doing? Mouse dragged. There we go. How lovely. Look at this wonderful water ripples all rippling around. So you, I think now I've made something that you, the viewer, could do much more with. For example, what if you thought about color? What if you actually started with an image and then you made the sort of pixels of the image, the initial values, ah, oh, and you could like ripple over those. Oh, oh, I so want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you do that. Make something with this. Now, this is eventually going to get really slow and it's probably going to be really slow the more, the big, larger, the higher the resolution I make. And if I'm, I'm going to try to make a JavaScript version of it, it's probably going to be really slow due to how slow pixel operations are in HTML5 Canvas. But I will think about all this stuff. I just want you to be aware of that. Um, I'm sure that uh, some of you will write in the comments and have some clever ideas how to make this into like a shader or something that's heavily optimized. But I'm happy where this is. This is two-dimensional water ripples thanks to the uh, Hugo Elias page from many years ago uh, about how to do this algorithm in two dimensions. Okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.